Monique made waves with her appearance on Shannon Sharpie's Club Shea podcast, not mincing words as she dished on big names like Oprah Winfrey, Kevin Hart, Al Sharpton, Tiffany Haddish, and Tyler Perry. But the question lingers. How did Tyler Perry take the revelations? And what exactly ignited this latest chapter in Hollywood's rumor mill? Let's dissect it all. Yet before we dive deeper, remember to subscribe to our channel and ring that notification bell for the latest updates and more content like this. Now, onward. Monique shared, I had a chat with Tyler. His stance was clear, no looking back. However, he proposed, let's not dwell on it, Mo. Let's move beyond and aim for greatness ahead. Fast forward a few years. February 7th marked another notable moment as Shannon Sharpie, the esteemed Football Hall of Famer, engaged Monique in a riveting three-hour dialogue on his Club Shea podcast, echoing the buzz generated by his earlier session with Cat Williams. This interview, too, captured the audience's attention, trending online well before its conclusion on YouTube. Throughout this extensive conversation, Monique took the opportunity to call out prominent figures in the entertainment sector, revisiting unresolved disputes. She clarified her stance on not being difficult before the precious press debacle, stating, the $5,000 for precious, never an issue. I fulfilled my obligations. It was their demands for unpaid labor under the guise of Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey that marked the beginning of the bidding by the then gatekeepers. In her recount, Monique highlighted, after sharing a recording of a conversation between Tyler Perry and myself with Al Sharpton, his initial support seemed promising. He likened me to a daughter, vowing to rectify the wrongs done. Yet, after a six-month silence, Sharpton resurfaced, not with support, but speaking on the luxury of flying in Tyler Perry's private jet, leaving me to wonder about his silence. She continued, Kevin Hart's gesture, a check-in solidarity, was deeply appreciated. When we managed to return it, we added a bit of interest, our gratitude without owing anything. During the podcast, Monique also revisited a pact with Hart, who had pledged to support her future endeavors. Tyler Perry chose to sidestep our past conflicts, Monique recalled. Let's set aside past grievances and collaborate on something meaningful. You lead and I'll back you up, Hart had offered. Despite Hart's initial financial support, which Monique honored by repaying with interest, their agreement eventually unraveled. Monique elucidated, after reaching out to the production company Endal about our collaboration, it fell through. Hart's manager, David Becky, was allegedly behind the dissolution, claiming Hart wanted no part in it. Confronting Hart about the alleged miscommunication, she was met with promises of a discussion that never materialized. Two years on, and Kevin Hart and I haven't spoken, Monique lamented, questioning the narrative spun by external interference in their arrangement. This episode allowed Monique to confront the tangled narratives that have shadowed her career, from her fallout with Tyler Perry and the controversy surrounding her Oscar-winning role in Precious, to her legal battle with Netflix over equal pay. With rare candor, she shared insights into covertly recorded discussions with Perry, revealing the damaging rumors about her being difficult, which led to significant career hindrances, including missed opportunities and broken agreements purportedly influenced by Kevin Hart's manager. In. Discussions of compensation and recognition, Monique began. The issue isn't merely about the payment itself, but the principle. You're aware with Oprah and Tyler being the producers for the film, right? It's not about who writes the check. It's about the respect of compensating for work done, I clarified. This sentiment also surfaced during Monique's commentary on industry veterans like Oprah Winfrey and Tiffany Haddish. Reflecting on Winfrey's involvement with Precious, Monique felt an initial wave of support for her stance against unpaid promotional work, only to find herself sidelined when Winfrey proceeded to feature her story on her show without Monique's consent. Concerning Haddish, Monique pointed to a 2018 interview 
where Haddish's remarks hinted at a lack of solidarity. Tiffany's GQ feature, in my view, showcases the pitfalls of not supporting one another. Had circumstances been different, perhaps certain challenges could have been averted, Monique suggested, hinting at Haddish's legal and personal troubles. Monique didn't shy away from broader issues either, addressing systemic discrimination and the fight for equitable treatment within Hollywood, particularly for black women. She also criticized the American educational system and underscored her personal battle for rightful compensation, notably for her work on the Parkers, which has yet to yield fair residuals. The interview, rich with insight, encourages viewers to digest it fully for a comprehensive understanding. Monique's candid sharing sets a precedent for openness in the industry, potentially sparking a trend among comedians to share their experiences with Sharp in 2024, promising a year of compelling content. Monique quickly transitioned to her rapid ascent in Hollywood, securing the Parkers just 90 days in. Navigating Hollywood's complex landscape with agents and lawyers at your side is a tale in itself. But how did the infamous Club Shea rivalry commence? The comedy world has been riveted by the ongoing tussle between Kevin Hart and Cat Williams, a feud that has not only divided opinions, but also highlighted the competitive nature of the industry. This long-standing disagreement has seen both comedians taking jabs at each other, with Williams also aiming at other celebrities, including Shaquille O'Neal, for their forays into comedy, stoking the flames of conflict. The crescendo of their dispute was notably reached in February 2016, during Williams' Atlanta performance, where he labeled Hart a puppet, igniting a widespread debate. Despite the backlash, Williams stood firm, advocating for unity among black entertainers and emphasizing the importance of supporting one another. The rivalry escalated with Williams' challenge to Hart in 2016, proposing a $5 million wager across various contests, from basketball to comedy, showcasing Williams' readiness to confront Hart head-on. This bold move underscored the intense competition but also hinted at underlying issues within the industry. A pivotal moment came when Williams extended an olive branch to Hart on the Big Tigger show, offering apologies and seeking to mend fences, acknowledging the shared struggles they face as African